July 2020, the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Western District of Wisconsin. CEO Michael Fuchs stands before Judge G. Michael Halfanger with a stark declaration. After burning through $60 million in investor capital and government grants, Engineered Propulsion Systems is just $12 to $15 million short of delivering their aviation diesel engine to a single customer. The Graphlight V8, they called it. Not just another power plant, but a ground-up design created to obliterate the fuel costs that had strangled general aviation for decades. In test flights, pilots advanced the throttle and felt something unprecedented. 350 horsepower from an engine drinking jet fuel at less than 11 gallons per hour at cruise power running smoother than anything in its class, promising a 3,000 hour time between overhauls that would rewrite the economics of private aviation. This wasn't just another engine, it was American Aviation's answer to the diesel revolution, designed by automotive engineers who rejected every compromise of the existing market. Inciting Conflict For 70 years, General Aviation had been the Studebaker of the skies. Elegant, storied, beloved by enthusiasts, but running on technology, frozen in time. While the automotive world advanced from carburetors to fuel injection, from cast iron to composite materials, from 1,500-hour engine lives to 200,000-mile powertrains, aircraft engines remained museum pieces. Lycoming and Continental ruled the market like unchallenged monarchs, their designs dating to the 1940s, burning expensive 100 LL Avgas that cost twice what automobile fuel demanded. Then European diesel engines arrived like the dawn of the jet age. SMA, Thieler, Austro engine, burning cheaper jet fuel, delivering dramatic fuel savings, running cleaner and cooler. Traditional American Avgas engines looked like propeller-driven fighters facing an inevitable future of turbines. Michael Fuchs and Steven Weinzierl watched this shift from their positions in the automotive industry. Both men had spent careers designing cutting-edge engines for Detroit, working with materials like compacted graphite iron that allowed blocks to produce more power at lower weight than aluminum ever could. Fuchs had been among the first engineers in America to employ CGI in automotive applications. They saw European diesel conversions, automotive engines modified for aircraft use, and asked a simple question. What if America built an aviation diesel from scratch, incorporating every lesson the automotive world had learned in 50 years of development? The struggle. The two engineers founded Engineered Propulsion Systems in 2006 in New Richmond, Wisconsin, assembling a team of automotive specialists who understood one brutal truth. Aircraft certification was a graveyard of brilliant ideas. The path ahead looked like flying through a thunderstorm at night with failing instruments. They would need to design, test, and certify a completely new engine under FAA Part 33 regulations that had crushed better-funded companies. Early concept work in 2011 produced a proof-of-concept engine that showed promise on the test stand but revealed the mountain they faced. The automotive industry could iterate designs across millions of vehicles. Aviation certification meant proving every single component would perform flawlessly under conditions that would destroy a car engine. High altitude operations, rapid temperature cycling, constant vibration, emergency descents, and continuous high power output that would leave an automotive engine melted on the dyno within hours. Critics in the aviation community dismissed the effort immediately. A clean sheet diesel in America? With what certification budget? European companies with decades of diesel experience were struggling to break into the market. Smaller competitors like Delta Hawk had been pursuing aviation diesels since the 1990s and still hadn't delivered certified engines at scale. Industry analysts calculated the mathematics. $60 million minimum to reach certification, probably more for a market that sold maybe a few hundred engines per year. The return on investment looked impossible. Some pointed to the Honda HA420 automotive conversion that had flown in military drones but never achieved civilian certification. They'll burn through their funding before they reach the finish line. Aviation analyst Brian Foley would later observe, the investment community won't support that kind of risk for such a small market. But here's the part nobody expected. The engine actually worked. By 2014, EPS had spent nearly $15 million just developing the fuel injection system with Bosch, the German industrial giant. The Graphlite V8 emerged as a 4.3 liter flat V configuration, eight cylinders arranged at 180 degrees, liquid-cooled with steel pistons running inside that CGI block. The design weighed 650 pounds dry, 40 to 50 pounds heavier than a comparable Lycoming or Continental, but still within acceptable limits when you factored in the 3,000-hour TBO that would slice maintenance costs in half. Initial dyno testing showed the engine developing 350 horsepower while sipping less than 11 gallons per hour at cruise power. The fuel economy numbers were staggering. 
40% better than Avgas engines, 15% better than competing diesels. The Breakthrough May 2, 2014, Mojave Air and Spaceport, California. Dick Rutan, the legendary pilot who had flown around the world nonstop in the Voyager, climbed into a modified Cirrus SR-22 with the Graflite V8 mounted on its firewall. Mike Melville, who had piloted Spaceship One into history, flew chase in a long EZ. When Rutan advanced the throttle for the first time in flight, the engine responded with a sound observers described as eerily quiet, almost drowned out by the chase plane. The test card was ambitious for a first flight, climbed to 5,000 feet, test the oil system under G-loads, perform 2G turns, rapid throttle movements, full power climbs, everything that could expose a fatal flaw. 20 minutes later, Rutan touched down and delivered his verdict. A new paradigm in aviation propulsion. The engine had performed flawlessly. Oil pressure remained rock solid through aggressive maneuvers. Temperatures stayed within limits. The single lever FATIC control managed propeller pitch, mixture, and cooling automatically, eliminating the pilot workload of conventional engines. But here's what made the Graflite truly revolutionary. That 17 to 1 compression ratio delivered a brake-specific fuel consumption under 0.32 pounds per horsepower hour, compared to 0.42 for typical Avgas engines. In practical terms, a Cirrus burning 11 gallons per hour on the Graflite could fly the same mission a Continental-powered aircraft completed while burning 16 gallons. Over a 500-hour annual utilization that translated to $25,000 in fuel savings in markets where jet fuel cost half what Avgas demanded. The engineering philosophy was explicit. Reliability through material science. Steel pistons instead of aluminum. Compacted graphite iron instead of aluminum or cast iron. Common rail fuel injection managed by Bosch Electronics proven in millions of automotive applications. One electronic and three mechanical vibration control mechanisms. The engine could run on Jet A, JP8, straight diesel, even kerosene, any fuel available at airports worldwide. Test pilot Stu Witt, manager of Mojave Air and Spaceport, stood on the ramp and struggled to hear the engine over ambient noise. It was the quietest high-performance aviation diesel I'd ever heard, he later said. The champagne flowed. EPS had crossed the most dangerous threshold. The engine actually flew. Military interest and technical validation. The U.S. Air Force took notice immediately. In 2016, the Air Force Research Laboratory's Advanced Power Technology Office contracted with EPS for testing at the Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Tennessee. They wanted to evaluate the Graflite for unmanned aircraft applications, where fuel efficiency could extend mission duration by hours. The testing was brutal. Simulated flights from sea level to 30,000 feet in the T-11 test cell, a facility that hadn't been used for a decade, but was reopened specifically for this program. The Graflite passed every test. Vibration analysis with multiple Hartzell propeller configurations, aluminum, composite, different pitches, showed the engine could handle any installation without additional dampening. No other aviation diesel had ever demonstrated such propeller compatibility. The data vindicated the design approach. While automotive conversion diesels struggled with vibration, cooling, and altitude performance, the Graflite had been engineered from day one for aircraft service. By 2017, EPS was conducting environmental and block testing for FAA-type certification credit, the formal process that would allow them to sell certified engines. The 385 horsepower variant intended for certification had completed 100 hours of ground testing with flawless component performance, according to CEO Fuchs. The company exhibited at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh with a sprawling booth, the production model debuting at Aero Friedrichshafen in Germany in April 2019. Aviation press called it revolutionary. Pilots called it the future. Market potential. The potential market was enormous. EPS surveyed over 650 multi-engine aircraft owners about STC interest, with 20% wanting the Graflite for Beach Barons alone. Add single-engine applications, Cirrus SR-22, Cessna 206, and TTX, Piper, Navajo, Robinson R-44 helicopters, Gips Aero G, A8 airvans, and you were looking at thousands of potential installations. In developing countries where Avgas cost $15 per gallon but jet fuel ran $2 to $4, the economics were transformative. An air taxi operator flying a Cessna 206 for 500 hours annually burning 14 gallons per hour at $210 per hour fuel cost, could switch to the Graflite burning 11 gallons at $4 per gallon, reducing fuel costs to $44 per hour. That was $83,000 in annual savings, enough to pay for the engine retrofit in a single year. 
The Graphlight promised to unlock aviation in markets where fuel costs had made flying economically impossible. The expansion. The aviation community waited. By 2018, the Graph Flight had logged just 25 hours of flight testing on the Cirrus testbed, far short of the hundreds of hours needed for certification. The company announced it had assurances of funding through 2018 and expected certification by year's end, then by the end of 2019, then sometime in 2020. Each delay revealed a deeper problem, software validation. The Bosch FedEx system controlled every engine function and proving to the FAA that the software would never fail required exhaustive testing and documentation. The issues that have arisen are tied to the formal aspects of demonstrating a high degree of confidence in new software to the FAA, Fuchs explained in 2018. The solutions were finite and within reach, but they required time and money. Fortune 500 investors circled but never committed. Venture capital firms scored EPS favorably in due diligence, acknowledged the engine's technical merit, but balked at the risk. The aviation diesel market was littered with failed attempts. Even successful European diesels sold in tiny numbers compared to automotive production. The investment community looked at EPS and saw a company that had already consumed $60 million and still stood 12 to 15 million short of a certified product. Behind the scenes, sources reported that EPS still owed Bosch $3 million of the $15 million fuel injection development cost, and Bosch had suspended deliveries until payment arrived. The company added staff, purchased new tooling, expanded its new Richmond facility. But the certification finish line kept receding like a mirage in the desert. The decline. July 29, 2020. Engineered propulsion systems filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the Western District of Wisconsin. The filing was clinical. There are currently no investors willing to continue to support the ongoing operations of the company outside of a restructuring process. And the company was at imminent risk of running out of cash and ceasing operations. After 14 years of development, hundreds of hours of testing, government contracts, press coverage, and unwavering technical validation, EPS had run out of money $12 million from the finish line. The intellectual property, the designs, the test data, the accumulated knowledge remained valuable, but only if someone could fund the final certification push. Then the situation turned strange. At an August 4th shareholder meeting, EPS attorney James Sweet revealed that a Delaware company called EPS Engineered Propulsion Systems, LLC, had been formed by Chinese and other foreign interests with the explicit intent of taking possession of EPS assets. They had assumed the role of debtor and possession lender, preparing a stalking horse bid in the Section 363 bankruptcy auction process. The Treasury Department had just published new Foreign Investment Risk Review Modernization Act regulations expanding federal oversight of foreign acquisitions of critical technology. The EPS diesel qualified. Judge G. Michael Halfinger approved a $1.1 million debtor in possession loan to keep the company operating through September 15, 2020, giving time for competing bids. Fuchs warned the court that without immediate action, the intellectual property would become worthless. The bankruptcy case terminated on November 24, 2021. Legacy and Resurrection The Graphlight Phi 8 never entered production. No certified engines were ever delivered to customers. The testbed Cirrus SR22, the engine that Dick Rutan had declared a new paradigm, likely sits in storage somewhere, a monument to what almost was. By 2025, aviation enthusiasts discussed the Graphlight the way they referenced the Tucker Automobile or the Northrop YB-49 brilliant engineering destroyed by timing, funding, and market realities, yet the lessons endure. The engine proved that American engineers could design a competitive aviation diesel. It demonstrated that clean sheet designs could outperform automotive conversions. It showed that material science advances could deliver reliability and performance simultaneously. Whether the technology survived in the hands of foreign buyers or died in bankruptcy court remains unclear. No spiritual successor has emerged. No manufacturer has explicitly invoked the Graphlight legacy, but somewhere in some facility, the test data exists. The knowledge of how to build a 350 horsepower aviation diesel burning jet fuel at 0.32 pounds per horsepower hour with a 3000 hour TBO exists. A direct lineage from automotive engineering breakthrough in 2006 to first flight in 2014 to bankruptcy in 2020. This is the brutal arithmetic of aviation development. It costs $60 million to nearly succeed, 12 million more to actually succeed. And sometimes the gap between those numbers is where dreams die. The Graphlight was more than an engine. 
It was proof that American engineers could still innovate in a market dominated by European diesels and legacy designs frozen since the 1940s. It was a test of whether the investment community would support revolutionary technology in a tiny market. It was a question of whether certification costs had grown so enormous that only the largest manufacturers could afford to play. Would you have invested the final 12 million, knowing that success meant a few hundred engine sales per year in a market that might not exist, knowing that even certification offered no guarantee of market acceptance? What if the graph light had reached certification six months earlier, before the bankruptcy? What if Dick Rutan's endorsement had convinced a Fortune 500 investor? What if the U.S. Air Force had committed to UAV production contracts? The what-ifs multiply like propeller blades in the sun. Aviation has always demanded absolute commitment. Whether designing engines or aircraft, the margin between breakthrough and bankruptcy remains ruthlessly thin. The Graphlite Vi-8 proved the technology worked. It proved American engineers could compete. What it couldn't prove was that the market would sustain the investment needed to reach certification. And in the end, that was the only proof that mattered.